If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. We've gone ahead and drawn a meter stick that has a small hole drilled through it located at a distance D from the 50 centimeter mark. And we've labeled that point as the pivot because the meter stick is going to be swinging back and forth about that point. Now this is a physical pendulum and there is a particular formula that gives the period of a physical pendulum. So the period T is given by the following expression. The challenge in this question is going to be to find the rotational inertia I of this physical pendulum. And it turns out we're going to have to use the parallel axis theorem, which tells us that the rotational inertia of an object is equal to its rotational inertia about its center of mass, which in this case would be the center of the meter stick, plus the term mh squared. Now h is the distance from the center of mass to the pivot. And we can see from the picture that that distance from the center of mass to the pivot is actually d. So we can replace h with the value d. We also know that a thin rod, which essentially is what a meter stick is, has a rotational inertia about its center of mass equal to ml squared divided by 12, where l would be the full length of the rod, in this case one meter. So we're going to replace i with this expression for the rotational inertia. We can see that the mass appears in all three terms under the radical, so we can divide it out. We'll also recall that h is the distance from the center of mass to the pivot point, so we can see from the picture again that that's d. We can clean up this complex fraction by multiplying each term by 12. We could then split this fraction into two separate fractions being added together. In this term, the 12s would cancel as would a factor of d. Now, of course, our goal is to find d, and so what we can do is square both sides of this equation. Perhaps we could then divide both sides by 4 pi squared. We have the d in the denominator, so what we can do is multiply each term of the equation by d. That way it will cancel from the denominator here. And then at that point, it looks like we've developed a quadratic equation because we have the variable squared. So in fact, we'll have to subtract this term over to the right side so that the left side becomes 0. We should then rearrange the terms so that the d squared term comes first, followed by the d term, followed by the constant. So now that we have it arranged in this manner, we can begin to use the quadratic formula to solve for d. It looks like, if we look carefully, that when using the quadratic formula, our a value is going to be 1 over g. Our b value is going to be negative t squared over 4 pi squared, and then our c value will be this positive l squared over 12g. A little bit messy, but we'll do our best to plug into the quadratic formula. So we've gone ahead and plugged a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. Notice that the period t is given in this case as 2.5. The length l of this physical pendulum is just 1 meter, since it is a meter stick that's oscillating. And then g, of course, is 9.8. So we'll go ahead and carefully plug everything in. Now, when you calculate this on your calculator, it might be a bit of a challenge to do that, you're going to get two values. One value turns out to be approximately 1.50 meters. The other value turns out to be approximately 0 0.056 meters. We can definitely reject this answer because that's longer than the meter stick itself. And therefore, this value for D becomes the correct answer. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.